The first eight things to do with your new computer. If you've been following along in recent weeks, you know that I got myself a new computer and talked about in a previous article uh, what I did when I set it up. This is perhaps more pragmatic for the uh, less technologically geeky folks. Obviously, mine goes off into the weeds with all sorts of random things that I install. This article focuses primarily on what you need to do. The first eight things to do with your new computer. The steps you should take right after unboxing your new computer to save time, frustration, effort, and data loss later. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com. A huge thank you to the patrons of Ask Leo for making this video, audio, and Ask Leo itself possible. AskLeo.com slash patron for more information, including access to patron exclusive content. Congratulations, you got a new computer. Of course, you want to jump right in and start using it right now. But if you can hold on a bit, there are a few tasks to do first. The steps you take now can save you lots of time and grief later. Meaning when all heck breaks loose and the machine dies, the software crashes, or you get a massive malware infection. Every day, people lose data, precious memories, and valuable time because they didn't take a few simple steps to prepare. And by far, the best time to prepare is at the very beginning. One, disconnect that new computer from the internet. I know you've already connected. You just couldn't help yourself, I'm sure. I'm the same way. You may need to stay online to complete the initial setup of your computer using your Microsoft account, but until we've made sure of a couple of items, let's pull off the highway for a moment if we can. Two, make a system image backup. Using Macro and Reflect, these is to do, the free edition of either will do. Or a similar tool, take a complete image backup, sometimes called a full system backup, of your entire machine. Make sure your backup tool supports what's called a bare metal restore, the ability to restore to a machine that has a completely empty hard drive. It'll be on the program's list of features. This step is particularly important if your machine didn't come with installation media since it serves as one alternative. Even if you did get installation media, a backup image taken now can be more convenient should you need to reset the computer to the state it was in on the day you got it. The reasoning here is simple. This backup is an image of your machine as you got it. It's a true reset to factory settings. Should you ever need to start over and reformat, reinstall the machine, this image backup can be restored instead. It will return it to the exact condition it's in right now in a single step. You don't even need to know how to do that today. The important thing is that you create the image backup and save it now. Three, make a system recovery drive. A recovery drive is a USB flash drive created by Windows from which you boot your computer in order to perform a number of Windows recovery tasks, including when reinstalling Windows from scratch. That last item means it can serve as a replacement for your installation media if you didn't get it. How to create a Windows 10 recovery drive walks through the process. Once again, this is something you want to do shortly after getting your new machine because it'll reflect the version of Windows as it was installed on your machine on the day it arrived. Another option is to download the Windows 10 setup media and save it or download it at some future date when you need it. The issue here is that this image will be generic and may not include everything that the recovery drive made with your own machine would. Four, set up regular backups. While you've got your backup software out, take the time to schedule regular automatic backups. Exactly what that looks like depends on your needs and how you use your computer, but in general, Backing up your machine daily to an external hard drive is good practice. If you're not sure what to do, I have backup recommendations. Five, check the firewall and connect to the internet. With your backup ready in case anything goes wrong, it's almost time to connect. First, you want to double check to make sure the firewall is enabled. In most cases, if you're connecting through a router, you're done. That router acts as a perfectly adequate firewall and protects you from random things attacking your machine the moment you connect to the internet. If you don't have a router, which is very rare these days, simply make sure that Windows Firewall is enabled. It should be already, but it's well worth checking. Once you've confirmed a firewall of some sort, connect. Six, install security software. Windows 10 comes with security software pre-installed and enabled. 
Windows Defender. If you leave that enabled, well, you're done here as well. On the other hand, occasionally you'll find other solutions pre-installed by your manufacturer or you might want to avoid Windows Defender for some reason. Either make sure the pre-installed software is configured and properly enabled or download the alternative you choose and set it up instead. Make sure to uninstall the security tools you're replacing, except for Windows Defender, which will simply step aside when something else replaces it. My recommendation, however, is that Windows Defender is just fine. With it enabled from the start, you really don't need to do anything else. 7. Update, update, update. Take the time now to update Windows in particular and all other applications and software installed on your machine. Make sure automatic updates for Windows are enabled. If Microsoft Update is offered, enable it to receive updates to all Microsoft applications installed on your machine as well as the operating system. Check for updates repeatedly until there are no more updates available. Keeping your software updated keeps your machine safe from malware that exploits bugs in the software on your machine known as unpatched vulnerabilities. Updates are regularly issued to fix those bugs. 8. Back up again. Once your machine is completely up to date, take another image backup. The image backup taken in step 3 is perhaps the most important. It's this backup that will be the most convenient. Why? Because if you ever need to use it, you'll have already performed steps 4, 5, and 6 and will have a head start on 7. You won't have to update nearly as much if you started with the machine return to factory settings. There's an argument that you don't need both, but I prefer caution. This is the backup you're most likely to use, with, while the backup from step 3 is an additional safety net. 9. Enjoy. Of course, there's always more, but this is a good start towards basic protection. These steps will help protect your investment, your data, your time, and your peace of mind. For links related to this article or to leave a comment, visit askleo.com 4689. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.